So let's just dive into it. It'll be kind of brief overview. But uh, I've been uh, working at Make for about four years now. I started working in Make Labs, where we would test the projects for the magazine. We'd document them, kind of find if they had any quirks. Um, and so in that time, I was able to kind of learn about electronics. I had no experience coming into it. Um, I couldn't program. I couldn't really even use a breadboard. Uh, so here we are later. Um, I think I figured out a couple things. And hopefully, we'll go over those tips and tricks uh, to help you out. But my background is actually mechanical engineering. And so from that, um, kind of in the bottom, you can see uh, I really like interfacing sensors to uh, Arduino or microcontrollers, so as Alistair was mentioning. Um, and one of the things I've actually really enjoyed has been building a CNC machine. And so that was the process of taking the electronics, uh, interfacing with the hardware, and then making it all kind of sync together. Uh, so some common questions that sort of come up and that I've had experience with are, you know, why would I use a breadboard at all? Um, how does it work? It's you know this blank board. Uh, how do you use it? What do the lines mean? Uh, how do I put components into it? Also, what kind of uh, prototyping boards or breadboards are out there? Um, and what should I use them for with my projects? And how can I interface them with what I'm using? Um, and then the best question always is, why won't my circuit work? And that's kind of be depending on the problem you have and the project you're doing. But uh, we'll go over that. And then finally, you know, what's the next step? Once you have a circuit on a breadboard, what, what do you do with it? So um, this kind of is the summary, I think, in my head as to why I use breadboards. I'm trying to get this mess of circuits on the top. And I'm trying to, in the end, get some final result, whether it's a circuit board. Uh, this is the CNC machines, integrated components. I did not design that by any means, but um, that's kind of the workflow. And so you want to get this tangle of wires, uh, computer chips, ICs, and get them into something you can use and that's reliable. The other option, or the other reason to use a breadboard is you don't want to get to this point in time when you're trying to put all of your stuff together and you're going, man, which wire do I use? How do I connect it? Did the red wire go to the black wire? And then you don't even know if it works. So before you get to soldering, it's, it's a great time. Put on a breadboard, make sure it works, make sure you have a great understanding of what's going on with the circuitry, um, and you can try to avoid some of these questions. So, to me, at least, breadboarding is a skill set. It's this maker mentality that you can sort of develop, and it's something you should practice. Um, I never get my circuits right the first time, and that's why I always use a breadboard. Uh, no matter how hard I try, how careful you are, how simple the circuit, you're gonna. I always botch at least one connection up, and then you know, if you've tried electronics, you know, if one thing's wrong, it just usually doesn't work at all. Uh, so breadboarding is a really great way to, to quickly test your circuits, to build prototypes, to go through the iterative process and figure out what works, what doesn't work. Maybe even you want to make a, 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 a final uh, circuit board of your project. How could you lay out the circuits so that they're space efficient or so that they use less power or so that they use less connections? Um, and then as always, they're great because you can reuse the components. You don't have to solder things onto a perf board to get your final circuit. And when you're done, you just pull them off, put them in your bin, and use them for the next project. So this is a great illustration that we had, um, one of our illustrators. And this is sort of like the basics to breadboarding. So we'll go over it. Uh, it shows you the breadboard. They come in various sizes, as we'll go over. Um, but they're usually plastic. You don't need to use soldering at all. And you basically have rails. Um, I don't have a mouse, do I? So you have rails. You plug in your power supply, whether that's a battery or a, uh, like a DC power jack from you know, cell phone chargers use them. Um, and that's going to provide power to the board. And so from those connections, you then connect either jumper wires or other components, and they pull the power from those, those terminal connections. Um, in the bottom left is going to be like an IC, an integrated circuit, maybe like a 555 timer chip that you want to program. And in the middle of the boards, um, if you can see, there's a deep trench. And that's, that's an actual physical disconnection. There's, there's no connection between these two sides. So that's great if you have components you want to add or you're trying to connect even like an Arduino. Um, on the illustration again, there's uh, these tie points, individual little divots that you see. And then if we go to the next slide, you can see that, again, the power strips, they run down. And these are all connected. So if you plug in you know, top power connection, this whole rail becomes energized. Likewise, this blue rail, if you plug in your, your ground terminal or whatever have you, that's, that's the whole ground for this one side. But again, this side of the board will not be connected at all. It will not be powered. 
Um, what you can do in the bottom right is you use like power jumpers. And so once you have your power source from your battery, you can run you know, red cables, black cables, and make a physical connection. And then those sides of the boards, they're fully connected. So these are some types of breadboards you may see, some common ones. They come in opaque colors, like we have up here, or the translucent. And you can actually see the physical connections. And what they are is there's metal contacts um, under the board. And so those metal contacts share the, whatever components you're touching. They're like a node, a common node to your circuit. Um, again, as Alistair was mentioning, multiple microcontrollers. There's some custom configurations, so you can easily kind of prototype with breadboards to your Arduino, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone. And then they even come as small as the top right corner, uh, left corner, uh, like a 2x2 two two or a 2x3 inch. Here's some of the bigger ones. Again, they're nice for space. I would highly recommend, you know, don't confine yourself to a small breadboard if you want to spread out, make big connections. Um, that's one thing I can't stand is working in a teeny tiny spot when you have all this room. Um, and then if you can see on the left, there is different terminals. And those actually you can connect to power supplies, um, bigger batteries, and then use those to jump over to your board. So jumper wires, those are what you use to connect different components or the different power terminals. And they come usually in two flavors. There's the solid core, and those are rigid connections. They're bendable. You can actually make them sort of bend. Um, and they're just usually like 22 gauge solid core wire. You can buy them in fancy packs, and they're multiple colors. Or you can just buy a spool and make your own. Uh, then there's also the stranded wire. And those have a stranded cable inside. They're flexible. There's usually rubber tips at the end. They're really nice for really quick connections or for having a flexible circuit if you want to actually interface with what you're making. And then when you're actually building your circuit, I would highly recommend using a voltmeter. You always want to make sure you have energy or, or electricity going to where you think it's going. Um, some of the biggest problems I have is I'll connect up a battery to one terminal. I'll think the whole board is powered. And you go to start your project, and there's just no power. And if you have a voltmeter handy or a, a conductivity tester handy, you can really quickly problem solve. Um, the other sort of trick, if you have a mess of wires, kind of like the first slide I showed, if you hit the wires and your project kind of intermittently works, you know you have a short. And in that case, it could be one, your wiring, or two, it could be the actual board itself. You know, as you use these boards over time, the connections become old, they become frayed um, in, internally in the board, and they might not be making the connection you think they are. So if you have a voltmeter or a multimeter, take the conductivity. So if you're successful in some of your projects and using breadboards, um, this is a great example I love to show. I was the camp director for the 2012 uh, Google Plus Maker Camp. And one of the campers uh, showed me some of his projects. And so Timothy, this is his um, Arduino interface laptop with the uh, arcade system. He's using the Arduino to interface with the push buttons. And then he's actually got a sort of taken apart, uh, I think it's like an Acer laptop with an LCD display. And he actually keeps the breadboard as a final part of the project, which is great. You know, it's quick, it's easy. When he's done, he can take it apart. Um, if you want something more robust, you might actually transition to something like what I really like is Fritzing. And that's an open source uh, software. And it really helps you visually see where all your connections are going to go. It's neat. It's organized. You can share it with others. You can get the components. They're in a library already for you. Um, and you can really see where everything is routed together. And another great feature about Fritzing is that once you've done the breadboard process, you can actually export it into a schematic. So if you want to think about you know, uh, laying out the schematic, how you're going to share the information with other people, that's another point. You can even take it further and do a layout for a PCB. So if you finally get to that final stage, you're happy with the circuits, you love how this turned out, it's actually working the way you want it to, you can actually format it to either etch your own PCBs, have them custom made by a manufacturer, um, or silk screen them. There's, there's tons of ways out there. Um, so that's sort of the end, end product that you can actually go to. Um, it was a little brief, but at this point, any questions out there? Or uh... All right, great. Thanks.